Warning. The message you are about to hear are the views of the Oklahoma Tomcat and are not supported by the government. Agreeing with this message could cause you to be targeted by the government, government agencies, and liberal advocates. You have been warned. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am the Oklahoma Tomcat coming to you from Bearden, Oklahoma. Today I want to talk about the most dangerous religion in the world. When I say, when well, actually when you hear someone say the most dangerous religion in the world, what comes to your mind? Some people might say Muslims. Some might say Jews. Some might say Christianity. Some might say devil worshipping or witchcraft. But I'm here today to tell you that none of them is anywhere as close as the religion I'm going to talk about. I've talked about this uh, when I was a co-host on Political TNT, but I wanted to... Uh, talk about it on my blog for those that may not have uh, listened to political TNT um, Travis Pope and I uh, did the radio show for a while but we end up have to let it go because neither one of us had the time to be on the show as often as it was required to uh, get enough listeners and stuff uh, whereas like doing this blog you know, whenever I have time, I can do a blog and post it, and people can listen to it any time. But I wanted to uh, talk about this extremely dangerous religion uh, on this blog so that more people will hear it. You know, I could spread this out and uh, post on several of my social networks uh, and also be able to be searched on Google and so forth. The religion I want to talk about, though, is statism. And those of you that know me on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, various other social networks probably see my posts about statism quite often. I uh, bring it up a lot because, in fact, I'm seeing it more often. <coughs> the liberals, both on the Republican and Democrats and Independents, uh, side of the Iowa uh, seem to be a lot more open to the fact they want the federal government to take over uh, become more powerful and they don't even try to hide it anymore um, and it, it just really blows my mind because statism you need a lot of faith to be a statist. I mean, your faith has to be huge. And it is a faith. And because of that faith, it is a religious belief. And I'm going to point out, uh, issue by issue, how it does uh, so align to many of the other religions out there. It, and for anyone not to see it is totally blind. And the one of the biggest things is the faith. I mean, every religion out there, no matter what re your religious belief, it requires faith. And for us Christians, we take pride in that faith. I mean, that, that faith is something that we know we have to have. And we are really open about it, whereas statists, they try to hide that faith. But it is faith. Because uh, what faith is, is you can't see feel or touch it but you believe it and for you to actually believe that the federal government or any government at that is looking out for you 
and has taken care of you and is good and loves you, that is faith. I mean, you cannot look at the government then through history and tell me that the government is good, that looks out for you, that it loves you and cares about you and isn't corrupt in any sort of way. You you can't say that. You cannot prove that. I could I could give you all kinds of proof of where government looks out for itself and doesn't look out for people. And every government program that has fallen time and time and time and time again. And for you to still believe that the government looks out for you and is good and that the programs are good and that they do not go after money and power that that is total faith and right there that there should be key to anyone that has eyes to see to see that statism is indeed a religious belief <coughs> first I'm going to go through all the things that religion and statism has in common. And then I'm going to point out why it's the most dangerous religion in the world. Okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to point out is this whole notion that uh, uh, where they take your money and actually now thinking about it I, I'm going to point out how they're most dangerous how statism is the most dangerous religion by or as I'm going through these steps okay <coughs> first thing I'm gonna go through is <coughs> we need your money to run <coughs> <coughs> sorry excuse me I'm I'm uh, getting over uh, an illness and but first, let's take uh, take the. We need your money to run the programs, run the religion, and also to give to the poor, the needy, the hungry, the elderly, the widows, the orphans. All these great things that uh, religious organizations and government both. Uh, need your money for. Okay. Now, through religion, every religion out there has rules given to them by their gods or uh, spirits or whatever of collecting money. It is either through tithing, donations, or many other uh, different laws that they may have okay for the Christian Christians it's tithing and donations okay uh, the churches collect the money and then they dispense it according to how their leaders feel fit okay through government it is taxes all different types of taxes <coughs> Also through fines, fees, uh, uh, insurance, um, many other, all, all this great stuff, you know. Government collects all this money and then they have leaders that distribute it out according to the way they see, see fit. Now, most of your religions, if you don't don't donate or tithe or whatever uh, they that's supposed to be most most of your religions at the least they'll they, they don't even know if you tithe or donate money okay I know our church they don't keep track uh, 
and they don't get on to you if you don't do it. That's between me and God. Some churches, they will uh, excommunicate you, meaning, nope, can't come to church anymore until you donate. Some of them give you the guilt trip. Okay? They, they will uh, uh, make you feel guilty for not donating or tithing. Now, the government, they take your stuff away. They'll take away your property if you own property. They might throw you in jail. Unless you're, of course, the great Reverend Al Sharpton, who is the minister of the statist uh, religion. Of course, he gets away scot-free, doesn't he? And that's another thing. You know, government plays their uh, favoritism. I mean, if, if I end up not being as far behind on my taxes as people like Al Sharpton or uh, <coughs> many of these other uh, people that are close to the government, um, I'll, be, I'll lose all my, everything I own and be put in jail. So you see, right there, you know, statism is more dangerous. And along with all that, if you speak against the taxes, or if you want if you go out and you try to get taxes lowered, or you you know join like the Tea Party or anything like that, boy, you are criticized by the status, aren't you? Big time. Even the IRS goes after you uh, if you speak against taxes. Statism, extremely, extremely dangerous religion. <coughs> How about for uh, behaviors? Okay, now churches uh, preach out whatever book they're, uh, they believe in. And it usually has a list of uh, things you're supposed to do and not do. Um... Now, uh, most of your churches, they use uh, where we keep each other in line, okay? Uh, the sword sh sharpens the sword, or uh, metal sharpens metal. Whatever, I, <laughs> sorry, it is a biblical verse I'm trying to cite, and I can't remember the exact words, but yeah, metal sharpens metal. Uh <coughs> You know, you, you try to re, uh, stay around or hang out with good people that will keep you accountable. If I sin or do something wrong, you know, my brother will take, you know, will pull me aside and say, you know, you're not supposed to do that and stuff like that. Uh, part of the uh, uh, marriage ceremony is for that reason. You have the witnesses to witness you getting married. If you uh, sidetrack or, uh, you know, do anything wrong against your spouse, you know, those witnesses uh, hold you accountable. And generally, that's as far as it goes. At the worst, uh, uh, there are lines for being excommunicated from a church if you uh, uh, sin too much. Um or go too far out of line to where, you know, it's like, hey, listen, you're now a problem for the church. Uh, go away. And for most churches, that is the worst. Okay? Except, of course, uh, if you're a Muslim, you know, you could get your head chopped off. How about with statists? You break a law or uh, don't tithe or uh, or I say tithe, you don't uh, give money to the status religion, uh, you end up uh, getting fined, taxed, uh, tax penalties, uh, arrested, end up having a record that stays with you for the rest of your life, right? These are all 
punishments for breaking the status law. You can even ex end up uh, getting killed. Which kind of aligns with the Muslims, doesn't it? <coughs> How about those that know more than others? The claim that you are you have special knowledge given to you by higher powers. Okay. Every religion does have your ministers, your priests, your uh, uh, senior people in the church or religion that do know more than your average person. And in most of those churches, you know, uh, it is because they study God's Word. They, they spend lots of time studying God's Word. They And they, they're supposed to take that knowledge and pass it on to the congregation. Well, statism has that same thing. You have your politicians. Now, in most churches and religions, your as far at least as far as the uh, Christians go, your those that study God's word and pass that knowledge on to others, most of them are humbled and know that they are a brother or sister just like the congregation. With statism, it's different. Because most of your politicians do look at themselves as gods. Or at least they act like it. And many of the statists do look at those politicians as gods. They're all-knowing. Anyone who questions them Oh man, that is a huge sin to question a politician. And the politicians do act that way. They they look at the average person, the people who put those politicians in power as nobody, as stupid, as dumb, that without them the average person would die, perish, go away. You wouldn't have a job without them. You wouldn't be able to drive without them. You wouldn't be able to... You, there would be no roads without them. You, you won't be able to eat without them. They are... In the status religion, your politicians are gods. And then you have your spokespeople like Al Sharpton. Those are the uh, actual ministers and lobbyists. And that, and I'm going to go further into the politicians being the gods as I go down the uh, list I have here. How about ceremonies and uh, delusions of control? I mean, in, in uh, churches, you know, you got your worship, you got marriage ceremonies, you got your baptism ceremonies, you got your, uh, in some churches, you got your confessions. I don't believe in the confessions, but in some churches you do. Uh, you got your sacraments. Uh you got your holy days and uh, some churches you have special clothing, uh, hats, uh, special jewelry. Uh, and you even in some religions you even have your pil pilgrimages. Okay. All different ceremonies and uh, control and stuff like that. In statism... You've got your devoting, which 
is has pretty much gotten to be a ceremony, huh? Uh, you have your trials, which is all done in a certain way. It's, it's, you know, trials, uh, you got the certain set up, certain ways of doing it. It's very ceremonial. Uh, you got your debates, you got your uh, patriotism, you got your pledges, the Pledge of Allegiance, you got your anthems, uh, special uniforms, you know, certain people wear and stuff like that. You got your flags, even politicians wearing their little flag pins. Uh, and you got your s symbols and all the stuff, you know. N <laughs> no difference between the two. How about this whole idea that because of certain people's positions, there's no fault or even taking responsibility for your actions? Okay. Many religions now. My church uh, does believe in uh, faults and uh, does take responsibility. You know, uh, we're all human. And we all have our faults, we all make our mistakes, and we are to take responsibility uh, for our faults. And it's clearly written in the Bible. But there are religious groups out there where this doesn't happen. I mean, you do have re uh, many religious people who believe, you know, that uh, priests or uh, ministers or, you know, people of a higher power have no fault they're, they're getting their answers directly from God if uh, anything goes wrong you know God allowed it. it was God's will it was which yeah God God allowed it but you know it's still human fault you know uh, and you even have it to a degree where you know some religions that uh, if uh, anything does go wrong, you know, that uh, it's some kind of test or uh, uh, because a person who, where things aren't going right, uh, didn't have enough faith. Even though <laughs> the problem could be the minister telling the person to do the wrong thing. <coughs> Same thing in... Uh, Statism, though. The statists are the same way. Politicians are never at fault. Especially if that politician is at... The, I mean, it, it's funny. Because both Republicans and Democrats have both had super majorities in Washington, D.C. at one time or another. And yet, those that are loyal to that party will never fault that party for doing, for causing problems, doing the wrong things. And both sides do it, you know. And both sides will criticize the other side. It's never their fault. <coughs> and the politicians are the worst at this because it's never their fault. Never. Ever their fault. They'll blame the last administration. We've seen that a lot with uh, Obama. He's he's one doing it the most. But they all do it. You know, it's always last administration, or it's always the Democrats' fault. It's always the Republicans' fault. It's a, and both are playing the same exact game. And the status who worship these people don't see that. They don't see that, hey, my guy is just as much at fault. He's causing this problem too. And what's crazy is this goes on and the status still say, oh, we need more government. We need more government. We need more government. We need more government. Not realizing it's government that's causing the problem. That's blind faith. And it's the same thing, you know, 
no different than some of these other re these religious religions out there. Oh, I gotta keep listening to my minister. I gotta keep listening to my minister. I keep listening to my minister. He tells me I gotta do this. I gotta do this. And you know, you're just things are getting worse and worse and worse. That is blind faith. You're you're following the people that are killing you. That are causing you your trials in life. You're having trials in life not because God is giving it to you. It's because you're following a human being. And for your status, you're following false gods. I mean, let's take a look at one thing here. Let's, let's narrow it down to one government program. War on poverty. Poverty has gotten worse and worse and worse since the war on poverty started by the gods in Washington, D.C. And yet we're still looking at government to solve poverty. I, I saw the tweets going out today on that. On, on people saying, oh, we got marched on poverty. We can end poverty. We can end poverty. We can end poverty. March, 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 march. God's in Washington, D.C. Save us from poverty. Obama tweeting it himself. The war on poverty has got the poverty has gotten worse since the war on poverty started. And it is because of government programs, not because people are too weak to be able to get themselves out of poverty without the saviors saving us. And speaking of the politicians, let's take a look at figureheads. <coughs> In religions, every religion, you have figureheads. They're priests, bishops, pope, pastors. Uh, there was the crusaders, the jihadists. Name the religion, you have them. Prime ministers, whatever. Let's take a look at status. You got your mayors, presidents, governors, leaders, uh, assemblymen. Then you got bureaucrats. Uh, all all these people, they're all figureheads of one type or another. When you get into president and uh, congressmen and all them, then you got your uh, the gods. <coughs> No difference. And then how about that superhuman status? Okay. Now in some religions you have, you know, there are certain people in the religion that you know, have all kinds of powers and stuff like that. They're given powers to do different things. Um, unfortunately, some of them have made Christianity look real bad. And I'm sure most of us have seen them on TV at one time or another. Um, but let's take a look at statism. Now, statism is a funny thing, okay? Because, you know, statists will admit that there are corrupt humans, okay? But they also look at the fact that you need other humans who, for some reason, won't become corrupt. To look over the other humans that are corrupt. Does that, does that make any sense at all? Now, I mean, in, in most of your Christian faith, you know, we, we know there are corrupt humans. And, mo and in most Christians, we also even know that, know that ministers and so forth are also can be corrupt. And it... 
is Jesus Christ who saves us. Not by making it so we don't become corrupt, but that our souls are saved. Our spirit, you know. But status, they actually believe, and, and the way I've described it to people is, you know, they, they, they think that there must be some kind of force field that goes around Washington, D.C., and when these politicians go in there, they go through this force field, and the force field takes away their human nature. And see, that's what it is. Human nature <coughs> is what makes us corrupt. Makes it to where we can become corrupt. Every single human can be corrupt because we all have human nature. <coughs> that human nature is... greedy okay and for anyone uh, to think that it is possible for humans not to have greed to have hate selfishness all these terrible things for anyone to believe that humans can get away from that actually do look at humans as being gods because it is gods that uh <laughs> that are above all that, you know, that don't have human nature. And for Christians that believe in the status belief, you know, you, you have to, even the angels can be corrupt. There is no force field around Washington, D.C. that gets rid of human natures that enter into Washington. That doesn't exist. And this is why I say that statism, the politician, and the status belief, politicians are gods. Because for anyone to have that much faith in a human has to look at that human as God. <coughs> there's no other way around that. There, there's, that is the only way you can look at it, is that human is God. That is faith beyond my ability. I, I cannot have that much faith in any human. I don't care who, who the human is. There, I cannot have any of that faith. Because I understand human nature. And when you get put somebody, gives a, people power and money, they are able to be corrupt. <coughs> unlimited power, unlimited money corrupts even the greatest of humans. The only way to give someone power and money without them being getting corrupt is by limiting them and keeping them in check. And the people who are supposed to keep these politicians in check is the voter. And when you believe that, then... You understand? Then you, you, there's no way you can look at a politician as God. Hypocrisy <coughs> is everywhere. All humans, you know, are capable of being a hypocrite. Politicians are big hypocrites. They are notorious for violating their own laws. And 
they will tell us one thing and they'll turn around and they're doing it themselves. <coughs> <coughs> Hillary Clinton just got caught. She was she used she was criticizing uh, other politicians for having secret emails, and yet she had a secret email herself, her very own email, with her own very own server. Rich peop these rich politicians saying the rich must pay more taxes, and yet they aren't paying taxes. They're they're in debt with the IRS, evading taxes. <coughs> and what's really funny, here's a funny thing with the tax thing. <laughs> you know, you got, you got these politicians, you know, saying, oh, you know, the rich got to pay their own sh fair share. The rich got to pay their fair share. You know, and you even have some politicians, <coughs> you know, say, yeah, I don't even pay enough. Uh, taxes, you know, we got to change the tax code so that even I pay more tax. Did you know that if you feel you don't pay enough taxes, you can go on the IRS uh, website and actually donate money to the IRS? Yeah, you can. IRS will take your money uh, if you give them more money than what you uh, are supposed to pay. In fact, they do have where you can make donations to them. You know. Uh, so, I mean, if, if you feel you're not paying enough taxes, by all means, you know, get on that website and pay. go ahead and give them more money. Another cool thing about the IRS, you know, if, if you're feeling that uh, you're not paying enough in taxes, is that you don't have to take those deductions and uh, other and tax credits and stuff like that. You don't have to do it. You can just go ahead and pay the flat percentage that you're supposed to pay with no credits and you know or anything like that. <coughs> you know, so and another thing, if you feel that you know, if you really care about the poor, you honestly truly care about the poor. You don't have to change laws to, you know, make it to where you have to give more money to the poor. You don't have to do that. You can actually give more money from yourself to the poor. You know, so, it, so you know, these rich politicians that feel, you know, like, hmm, the poor are just suffering, you know, and, and you know, us rich people, we just uh, have it too good, you know. If they really feel that way, they can give all their money to the poor. In fact, I make this, <coughs> you know, this this uh, challenge. And those of you that uh, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, you guys probably have seen this t tweet or Facebook post by me. You know, I, I make this challenge. Any politicians that says that they care about the poor and that they understand the poor and they want to help the poor, I say this. Give everything you have with the exception of, you know, a place to live, food to eat, and, you know, transportation. The, the, with the exception of the very basics you need to do your job and to survive. Give the rest to the poor. Show me with your actions, not just your words. And see, that that is the difference between having faith and going by facts, what you see, hear, and do. person with faith will take that politician's word as fact. They will believe it. Even though they, they don't have no basis to go by on that belief. They, they 
blindly believe what that politician says. The person that don't have faith that that goes on what <coughs> <coughs> what they see and he uh, what they see and by past performance they they'll say prove it show me they also go by past records and see this is where I, it's people status have tried to stump me on this before in two ways I've had one status to uh, say well Joe you're married don't you have faith in your wife and see this question is asked by some by people who don't understand what marriage is all about My wife and I, we are married. In the Christian marriage, once you are married, you become one. There, my wife and I are one. Everything my wife does, everywhere she goes, everything she says, everything, every bit of what she says, does, or uh, everything is me. She acts on my behalf and the same with me. When I'm out and about and doing things, I am acting on my wife's behalf. If someone does anything against my wife, they do it against me. There is nothing, she, if anything my wife says, I've said it. It's the same as if I'm saying it. We are inseparable. Okay? Therefore, my faith in my wife is faith in me. And those that know me know that <laughs> what I'm saying is I really don't have that much faith in my wife because I don't have faith in myself. I know I am going to sin. I know I am going to uh, do something bad. I know that I will fall short of who I even want to be. Because I am human. I have human nature. I know my thoughts. I know what I've done in the past. And I know in the future I'm still going to fall short. I don't have faith in myself. Not one bit. That is why I keep myself in check. My wife keeps me in check. That is why in the Christian uh, belief <coughs> that is why we surround ourselves with people who will keep us accountable. You know, I'm my everything I have, my cell phone, my netbook, every social network I have. Do you know who has passwords to everything I have? Who is on every one of my who's on every one of my social network groups? My wife. I encourage her to do it. Isn't that she feels she has to check up on me. It's, I encourage it. Because of the fact I know I am human. I don't have faith in myself. So why in the world would I have faith in government? Why in the world would I have faith in scientists? Why in the world would I have faith in doctors? Why in the world would I have faith in any human being? All humans have human nature. Here's another way status had gets me something up, which I already answered it, but I'll go ahead and <coughs> tell them what, you know. And that is, uh, 
that I don't have faith in any human. I mean, I go to doctors, I go to, you know, a lawyer, I go to... No, I don't have faith in any human. I don't have faith in my minister, my pastor. I love him, I adore him, I, I look up to him. If I'm to have faith in anyone, it would be my wife and minister, right? Pastor Mike, he's a great man. I look up to him, I listen to his sermons. He is a brilliant man. But you know what? He is human. And, during, and he even says that. He says, challenge me. If, if you think that something I say is wrong, bring the Bible to me and show me. <coughs> you know, I often say that statism is a religious belief and statists have a lot of faith and they do as I've pointed out and I often say that if Christians had as much faith as statists, which by the way, all liberals are statists, okay? In case you didn't catch that in the first part of my uh, blog here. All liberals are statists, okay? And every single one of them, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, even Libertarian, even though I don't understand how you can be a liberal uh, as a Libertarian. Uh, but and by liberal I mean someone who looks to government and uses government to make laws that profit them and don't go by the constitution or the letter to the law that's what I mean by lib liberals but if Christians had as much faith as liberals Christians would be unstoppable I mean to have that much faith in God um, it would be just unbelievable and I give you status a lot of credit you guys have gobs of faith to be able to look, look to government as your savior despite the fact that every single program they put in place is, has failed and how they take the money I mean you're, you're giving the money thinking you're doing so much good and yet they throw it away and put it in stupid stupid spend on stupid stuff not to mention the wars that they put their money into And constantly put us in debt while taking your money. I mean, where's our money going? Have you ever thought of that? Why we have to borrow so much money and yet they keep taking lots of money and all kinds of taxes? <coughs> Unbelievable. As I point out, the war on poverty. More poverty now than ever. How about the kids starving I mean we have the school lunch programs which are supposed to end you know help feed children we have the food stamp program which was supposed to help feed children we have the WIC program which is supposed to help moms you know low income mothers uh, with babies and they're talking about and then they enacted uh, the school breakfast program because kids were going without breakfast. And then we had, then now they're coming out with more and more states are putting in place uh, school dinner programs. 
uh, because kids are not getting dinner. And then they got some schools that have these programs all through summer because ki kids are starving in the summertime. Um, what happened to the food stamp program? Wasn't that supposed to feed children? You see where I'm getting at here? They got to put more and more of these programs on even, uh, because the problem is not being solved. But yet you got you status keep looking at government to be your savior. Lost status will bring up the roads. I'm I'm a truck driver. I've been an over road truck driver for over twelve years. Let me tell you something, those roads are not great. <laughs> I I think I've had more coffee go in my cup holder than in the cup is staying in the cup. My dashboard's constantly has spill marks all over it. What's up with the roads? We pay all these taxes and fees to fix our roads, but our roads are not they're, they're the infrastructure is falling apart. We have bridges falling down. People falling in the rivers because the bridge falls down. These are your gods. And how about all these wars? <coughs> all these unconstitutional wars. You know just because government, the, the president doesn't go to Congress to have a war declared doesn't make mean that the military action is not a war I've been in the Navy and I've been in three different wars not one of them was actually a declared war but let me tell you something when you're in that situation it is a war to the military men and women in those combat areas it is a war and then you know we talk about you hear all over the place about racism You know, we, we, no doubt you've had different religions, you know, with their race issue, racism issue. Uh, but how about the government? One of the biggest racisms uh, in history has been by government. And when you talk about war, I've I've heard people, you know, try to say that, you know, Christianity is, or no, religion in general, you know, is, there's been more religious wars than any other type of wars, you know. That's false. And I've broken it down for people. War by war. Guess which religion creates the most wars, starts the most wars. Statism, governments, fighting over lands, fighting over control. Most wars are started by governments. Indoctrinations, you know, and brainwashing, schools, news. Movies, Hollywood, all in support of government, taking sides. Statism is a religion, it is a religious belief. It requires faith that 
government is going to save you. As I've pointed out very, very clearly. If you don't see that, you are blind. Blinded by your faith. This is the Oklahoma Tomcat. Take care and God bless. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that.